Good morning. Hello, friends. This this is a pullover and a ponytail kind of morning for me. How about you? Uh, I'm I'm just talking about them. Oh. Well, if anybody was wondering, I'm feeling good. You are. Well, I'm feeling fine. It just was. It is what it is. So this morning. Noticing my, my Christmas present a little bit more today. Yeah. I got a Christmas present. You did? What was it? Well, Santa gave me an extra chin. He did. Is it a <laughs> he did. spare chin? He did. Yes, Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Good to see you this morning, huh? Nothing. Flexing your hair. My bangs are doing a weird thing. Okay. You miss having a ponytail? Um. Because she did her hair short. I know. I know. I'm trying to think if I would miss it. I don't know. I guess I would. Yep. Good morning. Welcome to Story of God Morning Devotional with David and Kara. My name's David. That leaves me. Yep. And plexus can help. Yes, it can. Oh, I forgot my plexus was the first thing this morning. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Um, and, <laughs> and we're working our way through the Bible one chapter at a time. Today we're going to be in Job chapter 22. Doce dos. Dos, doce dos. But I don't remember what 22 is. Bente dos. Bente dos. And I took French. <laughs> uh, you don't think you would till it happens and you do. Exactly, right? You don't think about it. Think about what? Um, the uh, Taking the plexus. Um, I think. I think it's what she was talking well, about. Anyway. I, I um, look forward to it. <laughs> we are uh we're in job 22 and uh working our way through the the book of job what an excellent study it is to walk yes. through the book of job even though you know it's one of those books that you're like gloom despair misery right no the reality is is that it's got oh ponytail you oh, don't think about it until... you don't think about it until you can't have it right yeah um um Let's see yeah, but uh, going through the book of Job has been uh, a fantastic ride. And, um, we're not done yet. And we're not done yet. Um, let me say this. Uh, very interestingly, yeah. I think that the Lord... Hey, good morning, Donna. Good morning. Um, I think that the Lord is currently moving um, us in the in the way. And he's been doing this for a while, but I think we're just now getting to a place... Good morning, Serena. Where, um, ...where we're thinking about the possibility of doing some kind of... Um, live uh, TV station kind of thing with uh, with some other content creators. Uh, yeah, Stephanie says halfway there. We definitely are with some other content creators where a story of God would be part of the, the process there. And uh, and so anyway, be praying for us as we search that out and My figure that out. My faces aren't TV. I just made an awesome one. It's, it's okay. It's all right. You, you just need to learn like, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, used to be on uh, TBN, where she just smiled and nodded all the time, <laughs> just like that, Kara. If you could just you could just smile and nod all the time, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's a good one. That's good. Yeah, that's a good face. That that doesn't yeah, show yeah. anything. That doesn't show anything. Uh, but anyway, be praying for us as we try to figure that out and try to see you know where the Lord's leading and if that's a viable option uh, for the future. And so uh, so anyway, uh, exciting things. Uh, interesting things uh, that the Lord might be doing. So, you know, put that in your oh prayer. Good morning, Janice. Prayer. Uh, Blessings this morning to every one of you guys. Yes. All right, let's jump into it. You, you ready? ready? Yeah, let's do it. Still waking up, Trina says, still waking up. That's why we have organic suspension. The finest form of organic suspension. Then Ellie Baz, the Tim and I, replied, Can a man be of benefit to God? Can even a wise man benefit him? Um, what pleasure would it give the Almighty if you were righteous? What would he gain if your ways were blameless? It is for your piety that he rebukes you and brings charges against you. Is it not? Oh, it was, that was a question, not a statement. Right. Is it not your is not your wickedness great? Are not your sins endless? Your demand. You. I'm done today. Um. <laughs> you demanded security from your brothers for no reason. You stripped men of their clothing, leaving them naked. You gave no water to the weary. You withheld food from the hungry. Though you were a powerful man owning land, an honored man living on it, 
And you sent widows away empty-handed and broke the strength of the fatherless. That is why snares are all around you, why sudden peril terrifies you, why it is so dark you cannot see it, and why a flood of waters covers you. Okay. Those are a lot of assignments against his character. Yeah, well, but and, and Eliphaz here is, is trying to state... Uh, he talks about piety at the beginning of this little thing. Right. So he's not talking about actually being pure. He, he's not actually talking about being righteous. Of course. But putting up a righteous front. Right. right? Uh -huh. For And, and uh, you and I, uh, unfortunately, when we aren't firmly rooted in our identity in Christ, have a tendency to do this. In fact, I'm reading a book right now by Ted Decker called... Um, the Forgotten Way. The Forgotten Way. And uh, he struggled... Uh, a the title. Yeah, I, I did. I forgot the title. <laughs> of the forgotten way. Um, but he struggled very, very much, like a lot of creative people do, like most people do, to actually put their real self out there. To self-actualize. Instead of acting pious, right? Right. It seems to be that piety, in the way that Eliphaz is mentioning it here, is more of an act of righteousness than, uh, or a, a, a stage play, a story of righteousness than actual righteousness. Because he says, if directly in the next thing, what is your, what is your wisdom to God? What is your, what is your piety to God, right? He understands the depths of your sin. He understands your heart and how sinful your heart is and so on and so forth. And, um, and I think that, I think sometimes that is a difficulty that you and I get into where we, uh, tend to put our story out there of how good things are, right? Of how pious we might be. We put a really good story out there on the on the airwaves. Uh, we take pictures of only our perfect moments and put them on social media. We write stories. I didn't. I shared my dumb salt shaker experience yesterday. <laughs> Go ahead. We write stories for ourselves and ultimately put them on social media or otherwise. We do uh, tend to present a case for our own piety on a regular basis. And so Eliphaz is kind of trying to call out Job and his sin. He's trying to say, oh, you act a big game and you think you're wise, but God doesn't look at all that. He looks on the inside. Now, yes, he definitely does kind of bring some assignments again against Job and against his character at this moment, talking about um, what's... What's uh, snares are all around you, um, right? You stripped people of their clothing. You sent widows away empty-handed. You broke the strength of the fatherless. <laughs> so Eliphaz is saying, "I see deep in your heart." You know, it's really hard for us sometimes, especially in relationships, to realize that people don't see our heart. Um, there are going to be people that do see the the inside of us, glimpses of the inside of us. Uh, they have vision more closely related to the Father's vision because Scripture says that man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. But unfortunately, a lot of relationships are going to be set up in a place of uh, projection. So people are going to project on you their own... Well, they are. Stephanie said, I feel like they're judgmental people. They are. They, that That's the nature of this this thing is where we look at the outside and we make an assessment based on the outside. It is judgmental. Good morning, Roger. Hey, good morning, Pastor. Uh, yeah, it is judgmental. But if we are honest with ourselves, and let's let's just all kind of drop the self-act for a moment, we are, whether or not we put it out there, we are, a, sure. we are a judgmental people. You help us, Jesus. Yes. Uh, you know, in the South, uh, we, we low-key judge folks. Uh, with gossip, bless their hearts. Bless their hearts. You know, oh well, they're just they're they're just having a tough time. About Here that, is my they? most favoriteest, most frustrating one: is when church people will talk about somebody's situation, and just to inform you, let me in, let me cannot let me know. This me isn't you know. gossip. It's just. I just to want let to tell you, know. you so you can pray. Don't yeah. tell me. <laughs> I need to call that person. If I need to call that person, just say, call that person. Don't be gossiping. There And, and it, honestly, the judgment is that we are placing our own, um, our own fears, our own uh, anxieties, our own difficulties. Oftentimes, we push that onto other people. Yes. Um, and we, we project those things instead of dealing with the fact that, that our own righteousness or our own uh, our, our own identity is not firmly rooted in Christ. Gossip is it is the slander of another's identity because we don't have a firm grasp of our own. Honestly, yes. that's yes. what gossip is. Gossip yes. Yes. is talking about another person's identity when we are not firmly rooted in our own identity. 
Right. Because we feel like we have to either compare or contrast. another person's contrast. identity. Has, yes. It has nothing to do with it. Uh, is, okay. Gossip is for the purpose of besmirching. Um, you know, I don't know. I, there are lots of well-meaning people that gossip without feeling like they're gossiping. Um, they are not out to harm the other person. Second degree manslaughter is still manslaughter, right? Sure. But that one's the unintentional one. Sure, right? sure. And and just to be fair, Paul puts gossip in the same uh, in the same list of sins as murder, witchcraft, and homosexuality. So um, let us not be respecters of persons, right? <laughs> or sins for that matter. And let's realize that that yeah. bringing false accusation against another, and it doesn't have to be a a, a um, high offense accusation. It just has to be accusation. Bringing an accusation against let your brother. Let me say it like this. Yeah. Is part of God's top ten. Okay, let me say it like this. I guess maybe what I said was misunderstood. Gossip is not only for the purpose of telling someone how bad another person is. Sometimes it's for telling yourself that they're on your level too. Yes. And bringing, it is a subconscious besmirching. I think that's what I'm saying. Okay, yes. Yes. It, it, it's making less of themselves so Increasing that we feel better. Yeah. Decreasing. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can go along You're with that. You're leveling the playing field. Yeah. Okay. And now all my southern friends are like, oh, I don't, I don't do that. I don't do We don't do that in my part of the south. <laughs> I love you. Catch yourself next time. Because I, I just yesterday I was talking about, and I, and I went, no. Oh, Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a button on my shirt Let's from here it. forward, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna point to it. The button's gonna say, "If you're gossiping, I'm gonna point to this." <laughs> <laughs> if you're gossiping, yeah. So, uh, so let us love truly one another, and, and absolutely lift each other up. Isn't that isn't that part of the yes. part of the reality? Is not to assign evil to another individual, not to assign wrongdoing to another individual, but to be able to lift up. Now there is judgment that needs to come from within the leaders of the body, and that's but that's a whole different subject that uh, that that ultimately has to be uh, um, has to be decided that's like, upon. That falls into the category of caring for one's soul. Sure, leadership, caring for one's soul. Yeah. Okay. So, so. Verse right. twelve. Yeah. Is not God in the heights of heavens and see how lofty are the star are the highest stars? Yet you say, What does God know? Does he judge? Through such darkness thick clouds veil him, so he does not see us. As he goes about in the vaulted heavens, will you keep to the old path that evil men have trod? They were carried off before their time, their foundations washed away by a flood. So we've got actually a couple of um impressions of evil. Some Okay, so um, was Zophar two days ago? Zophar was saying Zophar and, and Job are saying evil people are untouched by God until the second and third generation has come full circle. Right. And now here, um, Eliphaz is saying um, evil people come to ruin. However, we wax eloquent about evil and darkness. <laughs> it is evil and darkness, and sometimes we caric caricature. Evil and darkness by waxing eloquent about it. And we don't revere God as being holy and shun evil. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes we wax eloquent about evil and we don't shun evil. Um, in our pursuit to understand what is evil, we get close to it and we sort of, um, we sort of minimize and boil down and say, this is what it is, really. When we, when that in, in and of itself is even judgment. Yeah. Well, and, and I think uh, I think it's judgment against God as yes, well. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's judgment against God and his righteousness. So um, one of the big questions of Job is, and, and it's one of the questions of mankind, one of the one of the oldest, and then that's, that's the reason that it's put here in the scripture is, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people, Right. Um, and that, that, that is a question that comes up a lot in yep. our lives. Why, why is there that evil is allowed to prevail in, in certain situations? Zo, Zophar here, Zophar? Zophar, El then Eliphaz. Yeah. Is it no, Zophar this is speaking? A, this is Eliphaz. Eliphaz. It's Tuesday with Zophar. Sorry, yeah. So Eliphaz here is talking about, and he, he, he definitely has, so, uh, in, in theology, there's a, 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 a theology called, um, uh, 
and you, you know, uh, um, uh, theism, okay. theism. So theism basically just says that there is a God, but he, that he's not too concerned with mankind. That he sort of said all this, he wound up the clock, and he sort of lets it just run, and and he's not concerned with mankind. Folks do evil, but he's just sitting up there in his godly seat, going, hmm, "I wonder when this is all gonna kind of run its course into its into its ending." Uh, a, a lot of theologians have kind of fallen into this trap. A lot of people that think about who God is kind of fallen into this trap, thinking that evil, that the the, the presence of evil on the earth is a mark against God's sovereignty, right? How could a sovereign God allow horrible things like, like rape and murder to happen on the face of the earth um, if, if he was concerned, if he was, if he was a, a involved in, um, in our, our timeline? Um, and and obvi- the obvious answer to that uh, in terms of what we believe now um, about God and what has been revealed about God is that yes, God is has full authority. However, God will not take away free will from mankind. Right. And God gives every opportunity for an individual to do what is righteous. Um, do individuals choose to do what is unrighteous? Yes, they do. Um, uh, why does God allow that? Because God is going to allow every soul an opportunity uh, to receive him. Um, at different states. And you ask, well, what about the soul of the person who was raped or the per- the person who was killed? And I have to say that God has very special um, love and attention for those who are in, uh, who are in, um, who are the, the oppressed and the humbled. God draws near to those people. He opposes the proud, but draws near to those individuals. Evil still exists upon the earth, God is allowing evil to fully take its course in order that the the uh, in order that all of those things that God had put into place the 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 prophetic movements that God put into place run their entire course so that the 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 harvest of souls is complete realize that the the story of the uh, of the harvest the story of the the um, the harvest the parable uh, that Jesus said of of the harvest that the wheat grew up but there were some tears around it and the uh, the angels or the servants said um, should we just chop the whole crop down uh, now and he said no wait because when it grows full the tares will separate from the wheat God is allowing the opportunity for evil to show itself because in that part that when evil shows itself the Lord can deal with that. And bring the righteous into him. Bring those that have accepted Jesus into him. Why is that important? Because if he chopped it all all off now and he called uh, everything done now, the gospel would not have a chance to spread into the, uh, the whole world. And those who are going to receive the name of Jesus... And I look. I don't have all the answers of of if you look back from people's histories, those who did not hear the name of Jesus. I think everybody is going to be given an opportunity to receive the name of Jesus. Uh, I don't know how that's going to happen, but then again, I, I don't have all the answers. But if you look at that, what the Lord is waiting is for an opportunity for the whole world to be filled with the gospel, so that so that the decisions can be made, so that He can bring those into Him. Who, uh, who ultimately are his children. Um, and I think that's a hard answer for us to grapple with. And I think you've got to form your own thoughts about that, your own, oh, it's raining again. <laughs> uh, your own thoughts about that, your, your own doctrine about that. I think you've got to wrestle with that. But I think that, uh, that those are the answers that of what is, what, Eliphaz is speaking right here. He's saying there's evil on the earth. God must be far away, must be hidden behind the clouds, right? Um, let's, let's pick up at verse 17. They said to God, leave us alone. What can the Almighty do to us? Yet it was he who filled their houses with good things. So I stand aloof from the counsel of the wicked. The righteous see their ruin and rejoice. The innocent mock them, saying, surely our foes are destroyed and fire devours their wealth. Submit to God and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. Accept instructions from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. 
if you remove wickedness far from your tent and assign your nuggets to the dust, the gold, your gold of Ophir to the rocks in the ravines, then the Almighty will be your gold, the choicest silver for you. Surely then you will find delight in the Almighty and God will lift up your face and you will lift up your face to God. You will pray to him and he will hear you. You will fulfill your vows. What you decide on earth will be done and light will shine on your ways. When men are brought low and you say, lift them up, then he will say, uh, then he will save the downcast. He will deliver even one who is not innocent. Who will be delivered through the cleanness of your hands? I wanted to pause and see if you had anything to <laughs> anything to say there. I was chewing on the he will deliver the one who's not innocent through the cleanness of your hands. Yeah. Well, and Job at the beginning, remember Job was making sacrifices for his family. Right. Yeah. There is this, and Stephanie, I appreciate your your transparency uh, on the on the broadcast here. Um, yes, God creates opportunities yes. that even when the world is at its worst, that He can shine a light into the darkness. Yes, this is a way that the the devil overplays his hand. the The devil wants to steal and kill and destroy, but in that, it makes an opportunity for the life of Jesus to kind of flood in. Isn't that great? That's a that's a very powerful dynamic that we live with. Um, but I think you're you're exactly right. There is this thing, and and I, I, I still have yet to do some research on it. So if if you know somebody who's written a book on it or so on and so forth, please please do um, send it to me. But there is this thing about us being able to consecrate others' lives with our faithfulness to God. Yes. Uh, Paul talks about it uh, in terms of a believing wife and an unbelieving husband. That that also if your husband... About it as a slave and a free... A yes. Slave, a slave and a free person. Yes. That you may be able to consecrate the entire household by your example. That you may be able to to be the consecrating factor to... to uh, so, you know, I just... I wonder... I wonder what that is. I wonder if there is an actual, you know, obviously the, 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 our thought would go to, well, okay, they'll see it and then they'll turn to Christ. But what about those unbelieving husbands who never turn to Christ? What about those unbelieving husbands that never make that, that assignment? Uh, does the wife's faithfulness to God, does it count somewhere in that, uh, in that mix? I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. Either. So, so please don't start quoting me on, on what David said. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, I'm I'm interested in finding out because it seems like in the scripture that that when certain people were consecrated unto God, that ultimately the the people that followed them or the people that were a part of their household were also considered consecrated. Uh, and I just I don't know much about it. you know I know within Judaism. Um, if the mother is Jewish, the whole family is Jewish. The whole family is Jewish, right? Okay, right. the kids are considered Jewish, and that's very interesting to me that that God would put the the family line within that. Remember, they are God's chosen people, right? So the chosenness of them is ultimately passed on through the mother. Very interesting. Yes. Yeah, and it's interesting that God then would come to Mary, right? That God then would First. choose Rahab. <laughs> there, there are several women down throughout the line of Gene, Jesus's genealogy that are of questionable repute, repute, yeah. but ultimately became the chosen Amen. of God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, isn't that great? Amen. Like God brings the um, us of questionable repute into His kingdom. <laughs> yes, yes. Questionable of um, uh, well, anyway, I, I, I was trying to think of another word. Questionable background. I've got marks on my on my record. Yes, <laughs> and that's a good story for coffee. Yes, another it is. time. Another time. Um, but I think I, I think it's so important for us to um, for us to not think the way that Job's friends are thinking. Uh, Zophar here is making very great assignments against Job. Yeah. Without seeing Job's heart. Yep. I I keep waiting for you to come with some profound. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm I'm. I was just giving you an opportunity to. 
to speak. Um, I, I've been talking quite a bit. Yes, you have been talking. <laughs> about it, sort of. No, I, yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, and that's that's the remarkable um, that's the remarkable uh, moment for me in the scripture in this passage where he makes all these assignments and Job um, on onto Job's character yeah and how um, he stands at a place of confident assignment yes he stands confidently and assigns. Um, assigns character marks to Job. And so, um, you know, um, the one thing that as I close this chapter, the one thing that I want to say is everything he's saying is true mm -hmm. in, in nature and, uh, and in um, spiritual economy, um, whether or not it was true specifically about Job. And remember that the mark of prophecy is not saying the true things. It's saying the thing that God is saying at the moment. I guess as I'm mulling that over, I'm holding my tongue in order to say, um, in order to say only the right things. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't mean to participate with the spirit of perfectionism and religion as I say that. But it, it is necessary, I said this Tuesday, I think, that... that um, those who um, have been given the gift of prophecy will be measured for what they say and what they don't say. Yeah. Um, for, measured for, for what they speak and what they don't utter, or how they hold their tongue and how they're willing to speak up, even in the most difficult, most pressing of situations. And so um, the freeness, the um, like a tap flows freely when you turn on the cold, you know, the cold water. The freeness of his words is, is, um, and the freeness of the words in this whole chapter, I mean, this whole book is, is bracing, yeah. I guess, for one who is looking to speak only the right words. Yeah. Um, and, and, um, I want to be care. I was just, I was just trying to be careful about how I, uh, um, assigned a conclusive, word to this chapter yeah even as i was sitting here i wasn't trying to be no 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 i just I, I was interested in your thoughts you know one of the things that i was kind of dealing with recently um uh, is <clears throat> that I, I think i was assigning intent to somebody or i was assigning a blame to somebody in terms of saying oh that person is doing evil and the lord the lord rebuked me the lord uh chastened me and basically took me back to david David is going through, uh, um, I think this is in 1 Kings, but David is going through a valley and uh, he because he's escaping from Absalom. Absalom mm -hmm. has taken the throne and he's sort of abdicated. He's like walked away. And there's this guy that is basically, uh, I think it's a prophet actually, that is like throwing stones at him and basically calling him names and cursing him as he's going along the way. And Joab goes to uh, Joab turns to him and says, "Do you want me to take this guy out? I can kill him right now. We can be done with this." And David says, and I think it's, it's one of the most interesting things in the Old Testament. David says, "No, don't do that. It may be that God has sent him." And I think that that was a very, I think that was a very light shining moment for me. That David is go David is saying, you know, I may not see all the ends here. I may not have all the answers here. The reality might be that this may not be from the enemy. This may be from God. This person coming out in order to tell me the difficulties that I've been going through may have been sent from God so that I can see things more clearly, so that I can understand things more clearly. We have this tendency to put things either in God's camp or the devil's camp, and anything negative in our life we tend to put in the devil's camp, right? But the reality is God might be bringing difficulty, or um, I say difficulty, uh, Jesus always comes to, to give life, might be bringing hardship, Again, bringing something that we would consider so bringing as, something that we would as take wrong or misplaced, right? Or, that we would assign as hardship, or hardship that we would judge as right. In order that we we might be able to see things 
in a different way, in order that we might be chastened. You know, we can call the prophet that comes to us and calls us the, the thief of the one little ewe lamb. We might be able to call them evil, right? Um, oh, well, they're just coming against my, they're coming against my kingship. They're coming against my ministry, right? But the reality is there might be some truth. And listen, listen to me, friends. If people bring criticism, uh, criticism against you, just remember there might be some truth to those things. And being able to hold on to that which is true of those things and ask the Lord to transform you, right? Don't beat yourself up over it. Don't become, don't become embittered about it, but allow the Holy Spirit to speak, through, uh, speak to you through those things. That yes. is, that's important. Yes. That's important to always have a healthy self-suspicion of <laughs> saying, hey, this is, the, there might be some truth to these things. So um, Donna says that's, uh, that's good. Uh, Stephanie says describing to someone's character is something we all do. It seems almost uh, instantaneous as a response to things people do. Over the last few months, God has revealed to me uh, the difference in discerning their spirit and ascribing to their character. The line at times can be blurred. It definitely yes. can, yes. Stephanie. Very much. This is very true. So, uh, uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, so that I, I, I think being able to learn in those circumstances being able to say that this storm may not be from the enemy. Yes. This storm may be from the Lord. Remember, <clears throat> remember the Lord shows up in a storm for Jonah, right? Yes. Jonah runs in the opposite direction. Yeah. And the Lord sends the storm. Why? To get Jonah back on track. Right. Yeah. Okay. You ready to pray? Yes, let's pray. Awesome. Let's I've talked pray. too much. I'm sorry. You're good. You haven't talked too much. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ascribe it to my world. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> Don't be critical either. You're from the enemy if you're critical. I do. Uh, <laughs> okay. Overemphasizing things we learned. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's pray. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your word that causes um, truth to enter into our spirits yeah, and life you, to spring forth yeah. and death to be able to fall away yep. at your pruning and um, at your reviving hand. Mm -hmm. Father, we, um, we are able to be all that you have intended for us to yes. be in order that your glory would be ushered into our lives. Yes. Father, help us to remember and to keep at the forefront that the the thought of living a life that Pebble that uh, hosts your glory, yeah, Father. Sometimes we get so um, wrapped up in our purpose, and we think our purpose is for our purpose. Tell that it. you have placed us here for a purpose, so that we can have a purpose, and our purpose is our crowning glory. But really, your glory yes. is our crowning purpose. Yes, Father, so help us to remember that. So um, and and I just pray, God, that you would. Work and weave your glory into yeah. our lives. Yes. Father, all of the judgment and the assignment and the the um, the guilt finding, Father, that we sure. are so, uh, that we ourselves are so ironically guilty of, Father, I pray that you would wash us. Yes. Father, though our sins be as scarlet, Father, we pray that you would wash us as white as snow. And Lord Jesus, the judgment of, of sin uh, finding. Yes. And accusing. Yes. Father, I pray that you would relieve us from um, the need to judge. Father, yeah. I pray, reveal our own identities. God, so Thank that you, we Lord. are uh, able to see your hand and your identity at work within us. God, help us to be consumed with what you're doing here and not what you're doing out there. Yes, Lord. Help us to be wrapped up in who you are, not wrapped up in who others are not. Father, uh -huh. I pray in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes, Father, thank you for the wisdom to be able to discern, Lord God, what is your timing and your will. Father, we want to we want to grow and mature in our discernment, Father. Yes. So that we can um we can best uh be able to to capture the moments, God, that you're leading us into. 
that uh, be able to step in the footpaths, Jesus, of where you're walking. Yes. And so, Father, help us now to connect with what you're doing now, Father. Um, Lord, help us to listen out, Lord Jesus, for what you might be saying to us, even if it's difficult for us to hear, even if there are moments where our worst critic has come against us, Father. Father, help us to be transparent. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's my notification. Help us to be transformative people in the middle of a need yeah. for transformation. Help us to love others, Lord God, um, in the need of those to give uh, to give mercy to others, Father, and give grace to others, even in our own uh, frustration and anger, Father. In our anger, Father, don't don't uh, uh, lead us into sin, Lord God, but help us, deliver us from the evil one so that we can have right responses in your name, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> right yes, responses in your yes, name. Lord. In the name yes, of Jesus. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Amen. 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 Good. Hey, guys, have a great Thursday. We'll see you next week uh, on Tuesday uh, for Story of God. And uh, hopefully we should have everything and, back up. Yeah, we're walking through the back half of Job now. Back half of Job. The back 40, as my grandparents would call it. The back 20. There's 20. Because well. that's like 42 chapters. Yeah. And then Psalms. We're going to have fun there. Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye, y'all. We'll see you tomorrow.